Uh, let's bring in Mark Paoletta. He's a partner at the law firm Share Jaffe. He's the author of the book, Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in his own words. And he joins us now. Mark, good to have you with us. Hey, Vince. Thanks for having me on. So here you have the top prosecutor in the state of Minnesota comparing Clarence Thomas to a fictional house slave. Um, what are we to make of this? You know, that Clarence Thomas triggers the left and he really triggers the black leadership. And we saw this like last year, Vince, right, when Hakeem Jeffries attacked me for saying that the left hates Clarence Thomas, right, because he's a black conservative who's never bowed uh, to the left and what they think a black man should think because of the color of his skin. And he went ballistic, if you remember. Now, the funny thing is, right, is that Keith Ellison, Hakeem Jeffries, Benny Thompson, who had called Justice Thomas a, 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 an Uncle Tom and another crazed, unhinged moment, right? If you look at the issues, right, Black Americans agree with Clarence Thomas like wildly much more than than uh, than these gentlemen, yes. right? Affirmative action. You just saw the Washington Post story last week, right? Uh, stunning, right? But 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 we know these facts are, are you know are, are real that uh, Black Americans are against affirmative action in uh, in education admissions, right? They are for school choice. Eighty one percent of Black parents support school choice, right? Why? Because it's the, it's the way out to a better life. And guess what? The NAACP opposes uh, school choice, as I'm sure Keith Ellison and Benny Thompson and Hakeem Jeffries do. Voter ID, Black Americans in the high 60%, abortion, right? Black Americans support a ban on third-term trimesters, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know um, along with white Americans. I think it's the same percentage, right? Only 28% of black Americans were for defund the police. These, all of these things I just mentioned, right, are all gospel, right, to the black leadership. They're the sellout. And why is that? Because they get, right, they get lots of money from what the historically racist, right, majority white labor unions, right, who give them money. If you look at the NAACP uh, annual report, lots of money comes from those organizations. And so it's really rich. Right. That that Keith Ellison is is, uh, you know, laying out this garbage. And here's the, the, the last thing, though. Right. Vince, as you, we've talked about before, Clarence Thomas has been on the Supreme Court for more than 30 years. He has more than, I think, 750 opinions now. Right. He is the intellectual leader of the Supreme Court after, as he talked about when he first went on the bench. Right. They laughed at him. They mocked him. They dis disdained him. And what did Clarence Thomas do? He got to work. And guess what? He's changed. Right, the face of American jurisprudence, and he will long be remembered long into the future when Keith Ellison <laughs> is long forgotten. Yeah, there'll be a footnote. So uh, on, on your point, you just made me think of it, I, and I, I'm not even certain you've heard this audio, but I just want to play it for you real quickly. Uh, Congresswoman Cori Bush of Missouri was a part of a, <laughs> of a pro-abortion event today, very enthusiastically pro-abortion, uh, and she said that not allow so so let me see if i can understand this i'm gonna play the audio and then i'll summarize what we think we just heard here's cory bush okay despite what the anti-abortion movement says abortion it is not uncommon mm -mm. it is not not complicated it's not dangerous but what's actually dangerous what's really dangerous is forcing people especially black women to give birth. So it is really dangerous for especially <laughs> black babies to be born, says Congresswoman Cori Bush. I mean, this is as cruel and demented as it gets. And it goes right to the point you were making a moment ago. She is enthusiastically for something that the rest of the country is not. Yeah, you know, Vince, the, the left has just jumped, you know, just jumped the shark, right? I mean, they're just, they're just out and out just crazy now. And it's sad. And it's and it is it's disgusting. Um, and so, yes, the great majority of American people disagree, black or white, disagree with Cori Bush. And, and, the, and the problem is that they are the black leadership. Right. And Cori Bush falls every single one of those issues I, I mentioned. I'm sure she falls right in line with Keith Ellison. Right. And and so it's well, it's um, me, can I can I say, though, that there, we say we refer to them as black leadership. They're treated that way by the media. They're treated as but, if. They're in a position a of, of, yep. some, of some sort of leadership over black Americans broadly when they're when that's not true in any way. 
I, I agree with that. And, and so it's it's the historically this the this however you want to define it, the historically um, you know considered civil rights groups yeah. uh, or the black leadership. Yes, and I and I do think there are you know um, other black Americans like Clarence Thomas that are the true leaders uh, uh, you know um, out so. there and others that are you know um, that are pushing back against this narrative. Right. That is is um, is accepted by the media, is accepted. They're always shocked. Right. Amer- I, I, I talked to a reporter the other day that black Americans are against affirmative action. They just about fell out of their seats. Well, the, that's right? because they're against racial prejudice, like normal thinking people. Uh, and that's what affirmative action is. It's a euphemism for racial prejudice and hiring and advancement. And so when you tell people the basics, when you're like, hey, this is what it's about. They're they're opposed to it because because Americans are fundamentally decent people. Mark Paoletta. Yeah, and I would urge all of your listeners. It, one of the most, one of those powerful and beautiful decisions written, you know, in a very, very long time is Justice Thomas's concurrence uh, in, in the uh, Harvard yes. case, uh, and, and it's and, and it's a point by point. Rep, it takes on every single argument over the past thirty years that he's been making, right, and lays it all out in one opinion. And it is must reading for anyone who cares about these issues and cares about the court and, and the rule of law, but also just about these issues. And he just dissects them as he's been doing for 30 years. And guess what? You know, he's he's the justice who wrote the dissent uh, in 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 Grutter. Right? There's no other justice on the court from from the Michigan v. Grutter case in 2003 when they said, oh, maybe affirmative action won't be needed. It race based affirmative action won't be needed in 25 years, right? That was kind of that was O'Connor's uh, uh, little bone to throw, right. right? And what do they what do they do now? They come to the they come to the court. I was at the oral argument, and they say, "Oh no, we need it indefinitely, right? This is the game. This is the game that's played." And Clarence Thomas has been calling out for 30 years, and guess what? Yes, by his force of argument, he has convinced right six justices to say this is wrong, this is odious, and this is unconstitutional. And God bless him. He's our greatest justice. He's our greatest living American. And when you hear these attacks, right, that he has to live with, right, and he, and he just keeps plowing ahead yeah. and is, is, is unbowed by it, he is a hero. And, Have you and, noticed, and you see it. And, you know, the left oft, often defaults to uh, the support for its own position doesn't need to be grounded in any sort of merit-based or intellectual approach. It can be based on something called lived experience where they say, well, I just have an experience that you could never have because of your race and gender. Uh, so therefore, you should listen to me as a professional on this subject. That's basically the, the source of the argument. Have you noticed they don't use that argument for Clarence Thomas's opinions, that his, quote, lived experience doesn't support any any conclusions he comes to? <laughs> right. Hey, it's it's. Uh... He just triggers them. They don't, you know, they've been trying to destroy him since the day he, you know, was nominated. And um, on every level, nothing's worked. You're seeing it now with this latest this crazy ethics bill uh, that the Democrats are going to pick up this, this week. Yes. It's all aimed <laughs> kind of at Clarence Thomas. And, and you know, a couple other justices uh, who are great, great justices like Alito and Gorsuch and, and, and you know, have, have kind of come into this, you know, sort of this, uh, this, this smear job. But it's really Clarence Thomas, and it's not going to make any difference. They're not going to pass this bill or enact this bill 100 percent. And, um, and it's just to, to try and destroy, again, now that he's the leader of the court, and, the, and, and, and he's got these majority opinions. They yeah. want to burn the court down. And we've talked about this before. But that's what they want to do. The left wants to burn the Supreme Court down and, and destroy it because it no longer is their playpen to enact things like abortion, right? That they could never enact at a national level um, that they had this, you know, whether it was Republicans or Democrat presidents, they always picked justices, always turned out to be liberal. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now it's, it's uh, a, a court faithful to the Constitution and it's driving the left crazy. And the interesting thing, right, the, the three the, the three opinions at the very end of the term, right, the the, the, uh, the Christian uh, website designer, the student loan forgiveness, wildly unpopular, uh, and, um, and, and and the affirmative action are all things that were very, very popular with the American people. So, yes. you know, the, the, the left doesn't know what to do. Uh, all they can do is try and smear the court with these bogus ethics allegations. Also, there was, you know, even earlier in that very week where we got that the, all those great decisions that were pro-liberty, the court made a decision that favored with basically the lefty position on elections in North Carolina, in the state of North Carolina, because um, there was there was a push to say, hey, look, the only people who can change election law 
uh, as explained in the Constitution, would be the state legislature. The court ruled on the left side of this question earlier in the week, and all I heard was some grumbles of gratitude, maybe, and then they moved on like that never happened. Right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, the, the, the court's been the, the court's been by and large very good, been, been excellent. I think the best the, the best court, the be- past two terms have been the past the best terms in the past. Take your take your number, 50, 70 years. And um, and and I also think, Vince, that these attacks on the court have, have galvanized the court and these justices. And, and, and I think that you think it's so. A you think it's made, you think it's made them more resolved in honoring their commitment to the Constitution. I do, and I also think, in, in so, 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 you know, you're not going to get justices to, 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 to so I think, I think on the, 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 what I'll call the original conservative, yes, okay. I also think that they realize the entire court is under attack, and I think they have, you know, in, in some ways, come together even more. And, 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 and you're seeing that with the when the court issued the ethics principles, right? That all yes. nine justices signed. So it's a, it is sort of an institution versus institution. And as I pointed out in some of my writings, you know. Um, Congress is the biggest hypocrite of all, right? They have, they're trying to enforce recusal laws, uh, additional recusal laws on the Congress, uh, on the court, right? They're already subject to a recusal law, right? 28 U.S.C. 455. Um, and the Congress doesn't have any recusal law. In fact, Congress, m- members of Congress, senators, representatives are allowed to vote on legislation and work on matters that directly affect their financial interests or their spouse's financial interest, or their spouse's client's financial interest, right? In the executive branch, you'd go to jail for that, right? In, in, in the courts, you're, supposed to, you, you, you're required to recuse from that. But in Congress, you can do that, right? You can get rich doing that and yeah. claim, oh, you're doing it for your constituents. So Congress is at 16% okay, approval. Okay, 60, it's well, 60, there was one poll, poll that had them at 75% disapproval. Yeah. That's who needs to be changed right now in Congress. So, and also, I should point out, that none of this, his, none of the hysterics around the Supreme Court that the left has been kicking up have yielded an actual scandal of any kind. And all of it is just, it's meant to be the appearance of scandal. Uh, when you have people like Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas uh, going out of his way to make sure to honor every disclosure requirement he's supposed to, doing it with, uh, dut- dutifully, and uh, they're coming along saying, well, he's not telling you about this other thing and this other friend he's gotten that kind of – it's all meant to be the appearance of scandal because what they're trying to do is undermine the legitimacy of the court. It's not actually about benefiting the public interest. I can bet you today that by and large the court probably doesn't even care. Like, okay, yeah, impose more disclosure requirements. They, they probably don't even care about that other than the harassment that might ensue, that which obviously would be an issue. Uh, but the the idea of like uh, of of staying abreast of ethics obligations, my guess is the court doesn't mind that at all. No, not, not you know what Justice Thomas said when he issued a statement. I've complied, done my best to comply in good faith with all the recusal laws or all the disclosure laws, right? And now that they're changed, I will comply with them too. So you know, and again, this dishonesty, particularly of ProPublica, where they wrote this story about these trips of Justice Thomas with his with good friend Harlan Crow. And you know what? Those allegations were made in, in 2011 right, by 20 members of Congress and some left-wing groups who filed a complaint with the judicial uh, conference on the exact same allegations, right? And the, the conference said, you don't need to change your financial disclosure form, Justice Thomas. So it's, you know, and they don't, they don't mention that in, their, in, their, um, in, the, in the article, right? So they completely leave that out, dishonest reporting or sloppy reporting or whatever it is. Uh, they didn't mention that. So these issues have been the, the justices have complied with it, just like Justice Alito has mm-hmm. these crazy attacks on Justice Gorsuch, right, where he sold his home to his LL to an LLC he was in. He absolutely complied with the law. Um, you, you saw this crazy story about a, a, a Christmas party, right, that Justice Thomas was was hosting, where, you know, and and uh, allegations that people were paying him uh, through uh, his his court aid through a uh, Venmo. I mean. They've gone insane in trying to tear the court down um, and and just make their life miserable, right? That's that's part of this is yes. to intimidate them, um, to make their life miserable and go after their friendships, right? If you think about, you know, totalitarian states, where they ta- target, they target um, y- your friendships so you grow weaker. That's where you grow, draw, draw your strength. And so that's what they're doing with these attacks on the justices and their friends. Um, my belief, uh, they're all strong. 
and they're getting yes. stronger and they're seeing what's happened. And I can't wait for next term. Right. Uh, and, and, and this court to carry on. Justice Thomas has been on the court for 32 years. The longest serving justice ever is 30, uh, a little bit over 36 years, I think. Yes. Um, he's he's 75 years old. He's going to serve many, many more years. And so he's just getting started, in my view. <laughs> and um, and now that he's got this this majority of justices that are in sync with him, uh, I think you're going to see a, a, a lot of decisions that will bring, you know, uh, the American, you know, r- republic back to the the, the, so. the the founders vision and the Constitution. I hope so. But but what we've learned is the more decent you are, the more they'll try and destroy you. I mean, it, we've. In fact, it's, it's basically biblical at this point. The more righteous you are, the more persecution you'll be subjected to. Um, thank you very much, Mark Paoletta. Always so nice to talk to you, sir. Thank you.